Hi, my dear Astro family. So here is your monthly overview of April, which is probably one of the most exciting and one of the most dramatic months of the year. We have got two very important alignments going on this month, and that's going to be the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is taking place on the 20th of April. And on top of that, we are going to be having a very dramatic solar eclipse taking place as well on the 8th of April. But before we actually dive into it, I would like to encourage you to sign up for my YouTube membership program. You will receive additional 10 videos a month. I will give you breakdowns for your 12 signs as well on certain constellations. And you can also get some free webinars as well, depending on the membership you choose from. And I will be having a very exciting course popping up. One of them is going to be about your Lilith placement. It's going to be a free part webinar series. So I will teach you how Lilith might be causing you some psychological issues, especially we are going to be approaching it from a relationship point of view. And I will be doing a six-part webinar series on your 12th house. So we're going to be looking at the signs on the cusp of the 12th house, the ruling planet, planets in the 12th house. And I'm going to provide some remedies as well so that you can become the expert of your 12th house. That would be the agenda of that. So let's have a look at what is happening in the month of April. First of all, we have got six sign changes happening in April. We're going to have Venus changing signs twice. First of all, uh, Venus moves into the sign of Aries on the 4th or 5th of April, depending where you are. Then at the end of the month, on 29th of April, Venus will be moving into the sign of Taurus. Of course, the sun is going to be making its ingress into the sign of Taurus on the 20th. That always happens every month in the middle of the month. And Mars is going to be moving into its rulership position as well on the 30th of April. Mars will be in the sign of Aries. Sedna is about to change sign as well, and that's going to be happening on the 27th of April. And Sedna has been playing a very important role in our life because it has been squaring Pluto, and it's going to be squaring Pluto still till about 2028. So this is an important sign change. And last stop will be Mercury stationing direct on the 25th of April. So let's have a look at these first of all. So first up is Venus moving into the sign of Aries, which is actually the detrimental position of Venus. But, you know, we don't necessarily like the traditional concept of detriments because I tend to believe that we can work with planets in detriment as well when we are ready to do that. So Venus in Aries is an invitation to be authentic. It's an invitation to be a leader. Do you enjoy being a leader? Do you enjoy to be unapologetically yourself? These could be some of the questions that might pop up for you with this constellation. This is about, I tend to call it as an Angelina Jolie aspect, by the way, because you never see her without a gun in her movies. So this is not necessarily a ladylike position. This is a little bit more to do with, you know what, marching through. Being in a certain way creative to tackle some problems. Sometimes we have to, we, we shouldn't be ladylike, right? When it comes to a problem, we have to roll up the sleeves. We have to get dirty and we have to get to the bottom of the problem as well. So Venus is the planet of beauty, harmony, as well as something to do with money, according to um, modern astrology. But this concept of uh, Venus being the planet of money is pretty much about 150, 200 years old, by the way. So before it was more to do with Jupiter. Just a side note here. Of course, Venus rules something to do with our material values. And nowadays, money is our primary material value. So this is the reason why Venus kind of took over. But back in the days, Venus was not necessarily classified as the house of our planet of money. Even if you think about that, Venus is the natural ruler of the uh, second house. That was more to do with possessions. And back in the days, your possessions or your wealth depended 
highly on how many livestock you had. So it's just a side note I wanted to mention here. So how does Venus work out in the sign of Aries? This is going to talk to you about increased sexuality. This is about wanting to go forward in life. It's wanting to be somehow the leader of your own life. Pretty much being tired of... Uh, yeah, pretty much being tired somehow of uh, doing the same things. This is more of an adventurous Venus. It wants to try out new things. It has got that adrenaline rush going on. Now, as I said, Venus is in detriment here, which usually indicates that it's very easy to get burned while Venus is in the sign of Aries due to maybe it's a love story, but, um, you know, it depends on you what type of choices you make. Am I going to be depressed or am I going to become a warrior? It's inviting you to be fierce, to become a tiger. As I said, this is not a classic ladylike position. These ladies wear a gun. They have got masculine impression. This is about fighting for your position in the world. And also sometimes psychologically, it's about working with the scary part of being a feminine person. Are you able to get in touch with your feminine side? How does that make you feel? Um, often Venus in Aries might be struggling uh, with knowing what they are supposed to do or what they are supposed to become. And it's an invitation to follow your gut feelings, though. Also, uh, it could talk to you about getting into a love story that might be shocking others. I mean, Aries is connected to your survival instinct, and sometimes it's about the protection of the self as well. And maybe you feel the need to protect yourself from any of these love stories. I mean, Venus is a female planet. It's a personality planet. Right in a male's chart, it would talk to you about what type of girls you are attracted to. And uh, in a um, ladies' chart, this will talk to you about what type of a girlfriend you are. And often I've experienced when planets are in that detriment, we have to learn in the hard way, uh, especially at an earlier age, that love is not the way how we imagine that. And for example, often with Venus in Aries, what happens is when we love someone, we immediately need to go in a defensive mode as well. Either we're going to be domineering or either we're going to become submissive in that relationship. But there is the lack of kind of equality there. And Venus in Aries wants to experience or wants exciting experiences. experiences. It's really passionate. Uh, it is actually very easy to get into love spirit as well, but also it can indicate that we burn out of these love stories really quickly. Or when it comes to the responses, this Venus is going to respond to things a lot more in a decisive way. It has got more of a purposefulness around it. It's a lot easier to express your own desire. It's actually easier to form relationships spontaneously with others as well. So having Venus in detriment for three and a half weeks is not necessarily a major challenge. Uh, it's easier for you to show you, to show others that I'm better than others or I'm worthy if you have got the confidence. When you do not have the confidence, then Venus in Aries is going to be inviting you to work on your confidence level though. And that's important to mention. This is also about enjoying every facet of life, looking at the opportunities, going for it, and then enjoying that as much as we can. It's whatever energies we've got, we are meant to be turning that into a source of joy. It's about sometimes shocking other people. Sometimes it is about creating new relationships or reinventing the existing ones. And the reinvention might be connected somehow to intimacy department as well, actually. Now, as I said, Venus uh, is also going to be um, changing signs at the end of the month as well, when Venus is going to be moving into the sign of Taurus, and that's going to be happening on the 29th of April. Now, this is going to be quite a different energy. So Venus moves into its rulership, actually, so it gets a lot stronger. 
So if in Venus, Venus in Aries was about initiating a new love story, then Venus in the sign of Taurus would talk to you about how to solidify that relationship, how to make it more practical, how to work on the sensuality part, because we had all the desires at the beginning in the sign of Aries, and now we are meant to be working on the practical side, such as, okay, do we buy a car, or are we going to be moving together, or are we officiating the relationship, and we're going to say the first, I love you, and all those type of things. So somehow this is the about making a little bit of a stronger connection. Now, if Venus in the sign of Aries was causing issues around, I don't feel supported by my partner or I'm, I'm struggling to express my individuality, then this Venus is gonna ask you in the sign of Taurus to start working on that and to work on the foundation to be able to express your feelings a little bit better about any of the situations what you might have got you into. This would be talking to you about, yes, working on the sensual side of the relationship. Maybe with Venus in Aries, it was meant to be heightened sexual desire. If it didn't work, then Venus in Taurus is going to talk to you about working on that self-worth, working on your self-esteem to solidify your, your confidence so that we can get there in that relationship. Now, from a money perspective, it's going to be the same outline here. So Venus in Aries was so inspired to make money and it was looking or initiating new ways of making that financial stability. And then if we have found it, Venus in Taurus is gonna ask you to work on that, to solidify that, to have that plan and to, to carry that through. If you haven't found it, then Venus in Taurus is actually giving you the opportunity to come up with a plan, but it's gonna happen a little bit slowlier because you're gonna have to have the plan, you're gonna have to put that together. And it might be only happening when Venus is going to be moving into the sign of Libra, which is going to be approximately five months later. Also, this is about um, expressing your sensual side, getting in touch with your own desire, getting in touch with nature as well. Maybe this is going to talk to you about, yes, watching out your food intake, you like, you like a little bit more of the comfortable side. So if you were not initiating many things in the sign of Aries with Venus, watch out because Venus in Taurus can become a little bit on the lazier side, even though if it's in rulership. Remember that rulership is not always a guarantee for you that things are going to be playing out in the bestest way though. So, and that's extremely important to mention. Okay, so the next sign change, what we've got is actually Sun, who is also going to be moving into the sign of Taurus. Now, that's going to be happening on the 20th of April. So Venus will follow just nine days later. The reason why I wanted to bring Venus in Aries and Venus in Taurus together, because you can see you can build on each other. It really depends on how you use the planetary energy in Aries, because Aries is about the sign that connects with stars. So you are meant to be starting a new love life there. You are meant to be initiating new ways of making money. And then we go into Taurus and then we're going to build on those abilities. Now, Sun in the sign of Taurus, you know, it was worth looking at what was going on with Sun in the sign of Aries, what it highlighted for you. Because the Taurus element is really about building. So in Sun in Aries, you were meant to be working on your confidence. You were meant to be working on your authentic self. You were meant to be working on your goals. And then now the transit sun highlighting the Taurus cusp in your chart pretty much wants you to be actually working on that basically part. It wants you to be building further on those scales. It's a little bit more methodical, a little bit more receptive. It's a little bit more sensual as well. Uh, it's not necessarily the most active sign. So it's slowing down a little bit and looking at those plans because we were rushing a little bit the previous months. Sometimes we are defending of what we have achieved so far. And then we feel like we don't need to be 
gaining more, let's just solidify what we've got now. Uh, also, this is kind of like, you know, when you are planting the seeds, that's what we did in the sign of Aries. We planted a new path for us, but we need to water those plants. We need to be, you know, nurturing those plants so that they can start growing. So this is exactly what's happening in the sign of Taurus. It's about the, your security needs can increase significantly. This is about working on your determination. This is about loyalty. Loyalty to something that is somehow familiar. I mean, Taurus represents your values. So working with something that has got a meaning to you as well. And uh, so it's not necessarily about taking on new challenges. You know, the sun is connected to your heart desire. So it's very possible that you are going to be, uh, for example, connecting with nature a little bit more, or you want to be spending a little bit more quality time together with others as well. That's possible. Or you are just tapping into the heart desire of your own. Um, sun can represent all 30 figures in our life as well. So am I working with people who are on the same page? They are sharing the same value system with me. Uh, and also, it, sun sometimes dominates. So is this person dominating me, controlling me? Or do I have the strength to actually kind of control the situation myself? Taurus is a fixed sign. And it is ruled by Venus. So due to its fixed nature, it comes with stubbornness, sometimes with stagnancy, and we are not moving forward, which is not necessarily a bad thing, because as I said, we need to water those plants as well. We sometimes just, you know, we make the first step when we have got sun in Aries, and then now we are just standing there, and then we evaluate, or we are looking at what can be the setback, and then how we can overcome those. But if you get stuck for too long, then unfortunately it becomes a problem because you never achieve anything if you're always in the same position. So this is also a reminder of that because the sun represents your heart desire. So you desire to be somewhere at one point. And then the next planetary move is uh, Mars moving into the sign of Aries. So, and that's going to be happening right at the end of the month uh, on the 30th. Uh, well, it depends on where you are because it could be happening on the 1st of May as well. But I decided that in most major zone, time zones, it's going to be happening on the 30th of April. So we wanted to be talking about um, in this video. But again, Mars is the planet of achievements. It's your drive. So when it's in the sign of Aries, you know what? It's going to be driving, to, driving you to excellence. Now, Mars goes into the sign of Aries every two years. And this is a rulership position of Mars. It basically, it means that in its own sign, Mars is the planet of action, aggression, your vitality, your energy level. And it's in the sign of Aries, which represents courage, bravery, independence, leadership. So during this transit period, it's all about being dynamic. It's all about feeling an urgency or feeling very motivated to take action towards your own goals, to be in the driving seat of your car, to be more assertive, to be more confident, to push through your goals and then to achieve those. Sometimes it comes with a lack of impatience though or impulsiveness. And then we can run into conflicts and challenges or it can leave us disappointed as well at the same time though. Mars in Aries is very good for initiating new projects, starting a new diet, taking on new challenges, or even to initiate a new connection, like a new relationship as well. But always be very mindful, very patient, because the detrimental ruler of Aries is Saturn. So when Mars 
has no goals, it's just running around like chicken without hands, it drives you into a pitfall. So there needs to be an element of a cautiousness here or we can feel burnt out because we are trying, but we didn't have the strategy for it. Otherwise, this is a extremely beautiful position to have when you have got the goals and when you have got uh, the aspiration to be someone. And the final sign change of the month is Sedna, who is going back into the sign of Gemini. Now, this has happened before. By the way, if you want to look at where Sedna is in your chart, but most likely everyone is going to have that in Taurus because Sedna spent approximately 100 years in the sign of Taurus. Its astrological number is 90377. Now, Sedna was discovered in 2003, and its orbital period is about 11,000 years, so it's a lot. Now, Sedna was in the sign of Aries between 1863 to 1967. And then it went into the sign of Taurus in 1965, but because it's retrograde back and forth, and it's going to be there until 2024. Basically, this is the last time when Sedna is moving into the sign of Gemini. And it's going to be remaining there for 100 years. Now, Sedna went into the sign of Gemini on 16th of June, 2023, and the 22nd of November. And then we've got it now on the 27th, uh, 28th of April, depending on where you are. I did make a free webinar about this, and it's available on my website. So you can go and visit that. But I'm going to give you some pointers here with this uh, Sedna being in Gemini. So what is Sedna to start with? Well, maybe I'm not going to talk about the mythology part of it. But Sedna had to realize that she cannot rely on anyone. She was betrayed by her father. So it could represent father image issues in our chart. But it also represents guilt because she did things that she regretted later on. It's a spoiled child syndrome, but it also could talk to us about. But it's a spiritual awakening. Eventually, she had to go through plenty of trouble marrying a crow, who she didn't know it was a crow, by the way. But she was forced into it by her father. And um, and then the father tried uh, uh, helping her to escape, but uh, basically both died. And she became kind of like a mermaid, the goddess of the sea. So she had to go through a lot of pain, especially because of her family. Uh, but she found her true mission and her spiritual existence. Her death had a spiritual existence but she was violated before. She was forced to do something that she didn't want to, and that was the marriage. She was a victim and a part of an abuse, part of betrayal, but eventually she figured out what she was born for. So that's exactly what her meaning is. I mean, it could represent a blind spot in our chart where we don't necessarily see what we are meant to be doing. It might be something that we don't want to see. We don't want to accept. We are not willing to change. Sedna is the ultimate spiritual karmic mission in your life because everyone has got that in the sign of Taurus, most likely. Therefore, just look at the house position here. Okay? Now, when it goes into the sign of Gemini, then this is talking to us about the end of the technological and, oh, sorry, the birth of the technological and virtual money and the end of the current financial system, which probably we're going to see in the next five years. Because as I said, Sedna and Pluto are not in square. Maybe I mentioned it at the beginning with the square, but it's actually a trine that is for, forming between them two. Probably, you know what, computers will be more indispensable, faster travels by air. Uh, it would talk to you about mental challenges will also grow. 
I mean, mental health problems becomes quite important, but at the same time, maybe astral travels uh, or there's going to be some neurological discoveries or the discovery of an alternative world, virtual reality to feel extremely uh, uh, real, or marine animals might become quite a concern in the world because unfortunately fishes will die or, or, or nearer to extinction or at least certain species, of course. So this is going to bring us some major technological advancements, but also maybe some biological concerns as well around us. So Sedna is really exciting. As I said, Sedna, as soon as it moves into the sign of uh, uh, Gemini, well, it's going to start trining Pluto again. Sedna moves extremely slowly, slowly. So Pluto will come back to that Sedna and the perfection of that trine is going to start. I mean, the, it started already in 2022 February when we had the first trine. Um, it could also talk to us about how the education system is going to change the communicational channels, how we learn. The, the, the rebirth of social media, the rebirth of a neighborhood, the relationship between neighborhood countries, or even the rebirth of car industry as well. Surely some revolutionary ideas we are going to be seeing probably in the next five years. Because as I said, uh, uh, this trying between Pluto and Sedna is for five years. Unfortunately, it's going to bring in topics around human cloning and genetic manipulations and space explorations as well, most likely, with Pluto being in the sign of Aquarius. Anyway, if you are curious a little bit more about Sedna, then I recommend checking out my free of charge webinar available on my website. Okay, so let's move forward. These were the sign changes. Of course, as usual, we have got two lunations happening this month as well. And one of them is going to be the eclipse in Aries. Now, I have made a very intense video about this, a breakdown for the 12 signs, as well as a general forecast of this eclipse. So I don't wish to talk about this in length in this video, but this is quite a dramatic one. And this is about healing the self, being courageous, initiating something, tapping into your own power so that you can start fresh this is an invitation to start something fresh in your life and that would be one of the most important meaning of this eclipse of course eclipses are sticking around for about 18 months so i urge i urge you highly urge you to work with the aries and the libra axis in your chart because you're going to benefit quite a lot from that of obviously, this eclipse is so tightly connected to Chiron. It could be bringing up some issues for, uh, for you from 2023 October. You might have been revealed some of the pains that you're going to have to actually bury this time. Work them through. Not necessarily burying them and sweeping them under the carpet. This is about facing them, dealing with them, cutting them out of your life, or making them your own strength. And... Yeah, this is the major message. And also we've got a, a full moon happening in Scorpio. So we are back to normal, no more eclipse season, even though they are resonating with us. And that's going to be happening on the 23rd and the 24th of April. It's happening on four degree of Scorpio. So it's going to be happening right on my Saturn. So I'm excited about that. Saturn getting a bit of a highlight in my chart. But what is a Scorpio full moon about? So obviously it means that the sun is going to be in the sign of Taurus and moon is going to be in the sign of Scorpio. So this is about a give and take. What I have and what I share with others or what others have and how they share that with me. So this is the axis of intimacy and money. There is a little bit more focus on our self-worth, on our financial situations, on our self-esteem as well. And the moon in Scorpio is telling us that there are some emotion, emotional turmoil that needs to be somehow cut out and released 
a full moon is always about a release point. It's a culmination point of a problem. Something that is making us emotional might need to be let go so that we can start focusing on the foundation, Taurus, of the self. And that is one of the most important uh, message I feel with this um, uh, with this uh, constellation. Now, also what you might see, or if you look at, and I'm going to be making a very in-depth video, of course, about this, but this full moon is ruled by Mars. And you will see that Mars is still in the sign of Pisces. So it's a really emotional, it's a really emotional full moon. Now, during the eclipse, we had Mars conjuncting Saturn. It was about to conjunct. So we ran into some problems. And I feel like this full moon is highlighting that problem you ran into around the 10th of April. And then it is giving you the opportunity to release that with moon being in the sign of Scorpio so that you can build a better foundation, a better uh, financial situation for, for yourself or a better self-esteem. And that would be the sun in the sign of Taurus. But because the dispositor Mars is still in Pisces, making a conjunction to Neptune, which makes us ultra sensitive, it makes us confused. We don't know which direction to head towards to. We feel energetically weak. We feel kind of like dissolved or you feel like that your energies are spurging all over the place. So one thing that is for sure, there is a message with this uh, lunation is to ground yourself, to be able to find peace within yourself, to, to have a concrete plan because you can get really scattered. You can feel really weak and then you end up sleeping rather than focusing on truly what really matters. And that is you. So this is a, a little bit of an overview of the lunations. Now, of course, we have got this major conjunction happening this month, and that's the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction. I made a couple of videos about this last year. So I recommend checking them out. Um, I think at least I made four videos, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of an overview here. The conjunction is happening on the 20th of April. And we can approach this from a positive and the negative side as well. First of all, I would like to mention that Jupiter and Uranus conjunction from a Hellenic um, perspective. In uh, So basically what it means is that uh, from the sun's perspective, uh, if we were standing on top of the... Um, if we were standing on top of the sun, then this conjunction has already happened. From a world perspective, viewpoint of view it hasn't happened yet okay so that's going to be taking place on the 20th of uh, on the 20th of april but it already happened on the 21st of march from a uh, heliocentric point of view okay so and i noticed that that was the time when um, basically the bitcoin started going down a little bit so I feel like this Jupiter and Uranus conjunction surely will be bringing major ups and downs around investment opportunities, which would not be a shock anyway, because it happens in the sign of Taurus that is connected to the financial sector anyway. But on a personal level, Jupiter and Uranus could be looked at from positive and negative ways as well. So some of the negative ones we can become very impulsive and then we just gather things and then we've got kind of like a lot of waste going on. It's kind of like an impulsive shopping tendency or we are going to be buying up all the flowers and so forth, which I would not be shocked if it needs to be done, to be frank, because 
the latest eclipse, if you listen back to it, you could see that uh, Ceres is squaring that, which could really talk to us about the food industry and the shortage of the food industry, because Ceres is in the sign of Capricorn. So it could represent this Jupiter Uranus a little bit of a maniac type of kind of shopping, basically. We can have a lot of urges to be free, we can, um, it can give actually power supply issues as well, or the cost of the power supply. It could talk to us about kind of like being a little bit deluded, having this blind faith in something that is going to work out, and then it might lead to your own detriment. So delusions you're going to have to watch out for. But the very positive potentials of this combination is awakening awakening to your true talent awakening to your true potentials and then you expand your horizon and you are not that stubborn anymore and you are opening to new possibilities seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and knowing that you can get there it's kind of like a book is going to be falling on your head hitting you right in the middle and then all of a sudden you see what you are meant to be seeing. Maybe you are having a problem that you have been trying to resolve for a while and all of a sudden the solution just presents itself. It's about liberating yourself from something. It's about having a divine inspiration. And also you might wanna study something or you might get a reading from someone uh, it might be about exploring your own opportunities, traveling around. This is typically a lucky aspect, though. So having a sudden luck in your life that is going to be turning your life around. Probably, you know, I gave a bit of a mixed messages here with this aspect. It has got the greatness to it and it has got the difficulties to it as well at the same time. And the final aspect I would be picking for this month is the Saturn and Mars conjunction. Uh, now, I did make a separate video about this as well, and I'm going to be posting it, I think, on the 7th of April. So if you want to listen to that, you might want to be pushing the, um, the notification bell. And I'm also going to be breaking this down for the 12 signs for the YouTube members. So if you are interested, you can also consider that too. Uh, so, but I'm gonna give you some pointers here. This is a conjunction. So a new 26, 25, 26 month uh, cycle is actually starting between Mars and Saturn. And Mars and Saturn has got this really interesting cycle. So I am breaking that down in this future video I've already recorded. Um, so I urge you to listen to that. But every 30 years, they meet in the sign of cancer. And every couple of years, they meet in the following sign from cancer. So once every two, I mean, two years later in Leo, two years after in Virgo and so forth. So this conjunction is happening now in Pisces, which is nine sign away from cancer. So this is going to bring in travel, this is going to bring in exploration of the ocean. This is going to bring in exploration of traveling by the sea, for example. Unfortunately, it's going to bring in some type of floods and natural disasters connected to water, as well as something to do with hurricanes, tornadoes, or major flooding issues as well. Remember, Saturn usually says no to Mars. So Mars wants to run, and Saturn says slow down because we cannot run the marathon if we are too impatient. We need to actually work with our strength and we need to look at our limitations as well at the same time. So Saturn is asking Mars to be disciplined, to have a strong work ethic and not to give up. So this is one very important. This is the aspect that is talking to you about stamina. And it's just about going on and on so that you can achieve later. It might not be immediate, but in the next two years, you can achieve something. This conjunction is taking place on the 14th degree of Pisces. So the next two years, you are going to be, if you have got any planet around that 14 degree of the mutable signs, Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces, or Virgo, 
you are up for a change. You're going to have new goals. You're going to run into some challenges. You're going to have to roll up your sleeve. Sometimes you're going to have to modify your goals as well. So it's going to be happening on my natal Mars very tightly. My Mars is on 15 degree and this conjunction is happening almost on a 15 degree. So I'm going to be probably very passionate about, let's say, my body in the next uh, couple of years because it happens in my first house. And but Saturn is going to slow me down if I overdo it. And that's the danger of Pisces, overdoing something, being overly optimistic or overly negative as well, because we've got this dream image of perfection in our head. And then it leads to some type of nastiness. It leads to some type of becoming the slave to something. And you're going to have to be able to say no to those. It's about habitual changes, but it's slowly but surely. It's about healthy expressions of our darker desires, as well as of our realistic goals as well. We're going to have to find, uh, we're going to have to find uh, some balance there. So guys, this is my monthly overview of April. I really hope this videos, these videos help you to navigate your life into a better direction. If they do, please press like, share the video with others and um, push that little notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. Have a good one, everyone, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.